I have the world-renowned Michael uh, Stampar, Dr. Michael Stampar with us here, the Pelve expert. And uh, I was very fortunate that uh, he came to us for surgery. So we're gonna do a little bit of a uh, question answer here um, with Dr. Stampar today. So surgery can be a real life-changing uh, event in enhancing one's self-image. And I feel really honored to play an important part in your transformation. Uh, what made you choose uh, my practice? Well, I've known you for years, and even though you're unique in your approach to what we did, you're really passionate about it. And um, I know from your worldwide draw and from your expertise and the fact that I've never heard a bad word about you, that um, that you were the you were the way to go for my particular problem. Thank you. So what was bothering you uh, prior to your surgery? Well, I'm Serbian and Croatian, so um, the family heritage would be a very droopy, very baggy lower lid over time. And I've got uncles that, you know, that lived into their 80s and 90s, and they had the, uh, I say, the George Soros lid. And I always <laughs> wonder why a guy with all that money never got them fixed. But just uh, uh, worsening over the years, I wear contacts. So every morning I you know, look in the magnifying mirror to put in my contact and think, I got to do my lids. I got to do my lids. So, you know, it's just not going to get better. How did it feel to finally be, you know, as we do both do facial plastic surgery. So to be a surgeon doing facial plastic and finally be the patient, what was that like? Well, I've only had a cholecystectomy emergent, emergently. So I've actually never had surgery um, and actually been, only been asleep once until uh, your surgery. And um, I guess the fear always is, and it comes even when I work on my own family, what if it's, you know, what if it's not what I expected? You know, what if it could have been better? You know, what if I made a mistake? Um, but again, you gave me enough confidence and you were adamant enough about how you wanted to do what you wanted to do that I had all the confidence, you know, in the world that, that you knew what you were doing. <laughs> Thanks. How was uh, like your consultation, the surgery, the recovery? You know, what's your feelings on, on the process that you went through? Well, it was just really expeditious, you know. I, we're both busy people. Um, you did a really thorough exam. We had talked about, you know, my my needs, and you talked about your methods, and um, I just trusted you. Well, I appreciate um, that. Yeah. So it really, you know, it really went smoothly. Uh, I came down. I had to drive a couple hours to see you. Ended up staying um, almost a week uh, maintenance, uh, but it was all certainly worth it. It's awesome. So what did now after the fact? You know, what is it? Having had it, what does it mean to you? What are people saying to you, do you think, now uh, since the procedure? My patient today, you know, you're coming back a year for their yearly, and uh, they're like, What did you do? <laughs> um, you just look so good. And, you know, of course, you know, of course, they always tell me I look good from age. Um, but when I show them the before, they just can't believe, you know, what kind of change could be made. Um, they didn't really remember me being that heavy lidded, that you know, that old looking. And um, it just feels great to, you know, have that. It really was my one stigma that I, I just hated. And I tell my own patients, when you have something you don't like, and you can do something about it, do it. You know, it'll make you happy. And I really believe in look good, feel good. And those lids really, you know, were a downer every day. Yeah, yeah. We, we talk about that all the time is that we're very social beings. We love connecting with each other. And we tend to look at the eye and mouth region. Those are the two most powerful areas to improve. And you're right, in your condition, what you had there before um, was something we were able to improve and probably you know, really helped you, in, you know, afterwards. Yeah, I just, I never, actually, I never realized what an eye opening, <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> appearance I would have. Uh, you know, of course, I originally came for just my lowers, but there was no sense in not doing my, my uppers. And, um, now I've thinned my brow a little bit to give you even a more uh, full aperture to my eye and everyone loves it. That's awesome. That's really great. In terms of your family and friends, uh, would you, you know, why would you recommend uh, myself for your procedure um, to people that you, you know? Well, you're just such an expert. I mean, to do what you did and the time that it took you to do it and so precise, um, 
afterwards when I really looked, you know, at the wounds and looked at, you know, the incisions, I'm, you know, I make them myself. I, nice. I do some of the work that you do. You know, I'm like, wow, you know, I didn't make any mistakes here. And I've seen, you know, I've referred patients to other physicians closer to my area and seen some disappointments or some things, you know, that weren't, you know, as great. But again, it left me with that fear. What if mine, particularly, and you know, I was afraid of the laser. Sure, yeah. I'm not a dermatologist. I'm not comfortable with that healing process. But once you explained about, um, oh, I won't mention my age, but (laughs) you said you could pull on on my skin all you want, but I can give you brand new skin. And that's what convinced me. Yeah, we were talking about the fact that you could, you know, if you have a piece of wool or a piece of silk, if you pull on the wool, does it turn to silk? It doesn't. And the same way, if you have a pull on sun damaged skin, it doesn't make it new. But if we can get the body to rebuild itself, that's really powerful. That can really take wool and turn it to silk that way. What challenges, just, just as a medical practice from your standpoint, so what do you feel are the challenges that we as physicians are facing today? you know, regarding uh, mask wear, you know, because interestingly, now that we're, I was thinking now that we wear the mask, the eyes show up incredibly, you know, when we're seeing each other, even more so than it did before. Yeah, I, I personally don't have a problem. I have some unique masks that um, almost like a muzzle uh, that, that fit really well and then don't fog my glasses. Uh, but even when I look at my wife who has to be in one all day long, you know, 30 plus patients a day, I'm seeing things I'm going to have to fix, you know, as things lighten up, you know, um, a little bit of extra smoothing and, uh, you know, the crow's feet, a little sure. extra fill, you know, other things that will enhance the eyes. But I do remember going to Dubai and training somebody with Pelave and wondering why in the world this guy is, you know, doing plastic surgery when all you can see are these women's eyes to the black slits of their burqa. And, uh, <laughs> He said he really liked my suggestion that beauty is in the eyes, and that is really one of the reasons they they concentrate on that in in the eastern, uh, our east, is right? Because a lot of times that is you know not only is that what's the most attractive part of those women, but it's sometimes all they see. You know, they uh, they looked in Iran. You know, the number one surgery in all of Iran is rhinoplasty. <laughs> I guess that's a degree of how far your mask sticks out. <laughs> right. It's the one thing that, that actually shows is this small area. So it is rampant. Like teenagers get it done, young adults, old adults. Like like the amount of rhinoplasties in, in Iran might actually outstrip the rest of the world. Uh, so I've heard. <laughs> that's interesting. Um, so uh, I want to thank you so much for spending time with, uh, with us here. And um, if you had any other comments that you wanted to make, you know, I'm happy to, but uh, I want to say thanks for sharing this because as another plastic surgeon, you being able to share your thoughts, I mean, it's a big deal. I have, it was a real honor, honestly, for me to help you, someone who I've actually come down to you to learn about Pelave and those things. So we've kind of helped each other over the years and it's been an honor for me helping you. Well, I think you should add that you, your office being able to offer the uh, hyperbaric uh, as an aid to healing you know, in my case, I took, I did my surgery on a Friday. I really wanted to be back uh, Monday, you know, 10 days later. And um, the hyperbaric was very convenient because I stayed, you know, in Tampa across the street from the, from the uh, center. They were very professional, you know, two hours a day, you know, were no more boring than the hours of soaking and, <laughs> and healing that I had to go through. Um, but it really, it really was that additional perk uh, to make sure I heal properly and, and ideally. Yeah, we, I said I was amazed at how well your wounds healed, the upper lids, the swelling was, was minimal at 10 days, really just beyond things that we normally see. So that, that really did seem to help. I agree. That's, thanks for mentioning that. And when I show the people the pictures where it really looks horrendous, you know, red from the laser, the, um, the bit, bit of swelling and, and the wounds, and I just tell them, you know, it actually didn't hurt at all. I didn't take any pain medicine. If I took anything, I just took something to help me sleep between, you know, between soaps. Really painless. Yeah, people always think it's the, the mind. People think, oh, is this going to be painful? Because look at those wounds. And usually as long as the wounds are covered, it doesn't, st- it doesn't uh, signal to the brain. So usually people are pretty comfortable, you know, through the process. And even that cool. anchor, so, you know, even that anchor into the bone, you know, for the lid, I thought maybe I'd feel that and you know, yeah. have this ache and I've, I've had no pain at all. That's really great. Well, thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> no problem at all. You have a great uh, holiday season. You too, you too. Okay, take care. Thanks.
Bye-bye.